Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about a way to visualize sound and audio. It's a really fascinating way. It tells us about why different things sound differently, even if they're playing the same note at the same frequency, so to speak. It's also a way that is very useful for machine learning. So things like speech recognition. So when you speak to Siri or Alexa or speak into your phone, uh, this technology is very useful in breaking down the, the sound and enabling machines and software algorithms uh, to break down the audio into words and letters and understand somewhat of, of what you're saying and what, what you're vocalizing. Beyond this, this technology is very useful in visualizing the sounds of animals and it's helping us decode some of the information that animals put into their sounds. So we'll look, for example, at the prairie dog, which is an animal that looks like um, a squirrel, but in its vocalizations and its sounds and audio, it can tell, it, it encodes information such as this animal is attacking, a wolf is attacking, or a, a, a dog is attacking, uh, or a hawk is attacking. Uh, but it also describes humans, so it describes the, the, the color of clothes that we're wearing, it describes the height and the size of, of the humans. It's, it's a very fascinating um, way to start to understand how animals communicate. Either smaller animals like this, but also this applies to more sophisticated or more intelligent animals, kind of like dolphins or whales, um, that have a much more sophisticated apparatus around sound. So they not only do they hear and listen to sound, but they see their world through sound uh, using uh, the, the technology, a biotechnology that they have called echolocation, uh, which works kind of like radar. Uh, so we look at, at how this way of visualizing sound factors into machine learning, in speech recognition, how it factors into decoding the language of animals, uh, but also a very fascinating way that I've been spending a bunch of time doing is looking at music and how we can visualize rhythm and melody and harmony um, and these, these interesting musical uh, ideas using this um, way of uh, visualization. So. Uh, let's get right down to it. Okay, so this is a spectrogram and you can see it visualizing my sound as I speak. You can tell by how it's scrolling and sort of how it's reacting with my voice that the x-axis is time. So as time goes by, it encodes, let's say, every slice of time into like a column and it visualizes that. But can you guess what the y axis is. I can help you by producing a specific sound and it might give you an indication. So if I go from low to very high, and that's the highest note that I can uh, make, I think, you can start to see that, okay, um, the Y axis is frequency. And so this is a visualization running on my iPad and then you can see that a note like is is a B2. So that's a musical note. Um, and But there are a bunch of lines above it. Um, and already a, the spectrogram is showing you uh, a property of sound, which is these lines that, you know, a specific voice, even if it sings a specific note, um, it's singing other notes as well. These are called harmonics or overtones. Are they always there? Not with every sound, uh, but let's look at a few uh, interesting sounds. I'm gonna play an audio file uh, that plays the same note. This is A, which rings out at 440 hertz. This is A440. And to demonstrate harmonics and overtones and how they uh, go into the into defining this type of, of voice that you're hearing for a tone, even if it's playing at the same note. I have an audio file that plays the same note, A4, with these instruments. So we'll start with a piano, we'll go through a harp, a viola, a cello, and then multiple cellos, and then French horn, and then flute. So the sound sounds like this.
So if you can hear it, these are all, you know, five or like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different instruments playing the same note, but it sounds different. Why is that? Let's visualize that with the spectrogram. So this is what the spectrogram uh, looks like. So here's here's the piano. You can see the main note that you're hearing, the A. Uh, four note at 4400 hertz is highlighted here. So this is where 440, not 4400, 440 uh, is. And you can see it's a, this line plays with all of these various notes, but it's not the only one. So there are these overtones um, above it. And you can see how the difference in overtones, um, so all of these ring out with the piano, but they don't all ring out in, in the harp. Uh, especially around, let's say, the higher uh, frequencies here. So uh, let's play the piano again. And then that's the harp. And then for the xylophone, you can see that maybe, you know, this one is playing out in addition to the A4, but then uh, this one, this harmonic is not playing out. Um, a bunch of these at the top aren't uh, ringing at the same frequency or the same power. And that is what makes different sounds different, even though they're playing this same note, the 440. So the way this is defined is that this one, the one that you hear as you know, it's called the fundamental frequency. And everything above it, or sometimes below it, is called uh, these are harmonics, so overtones uh, or, or undertones. So let's do that again and listen to the piano, and then the harp, and then the xylophone. And then here we have, let's say, a viola, which is like a violin, but it's a little, let's say, larger than a, a violin. And then this is the cello, which is the, the larger one, which is played uh, sitting down, kind of like this, or I guess standing up, but it's, you know, you're not holding it up. Um, and then here, this is a group of cellos, so this is a cello section. So let's listen to them again. The viola, cello, group of cellos. So... Uh, the the difference between these sounds and let's say the piano and between them themselves is called timbre. Uh, it's spelled kind of like timber, but it's it's timbre. And what makes the diff the the timbre for different instruments different is precisely this. So what overtones ring out, what power uh, they ring out at, and here is you know the the clearest way to visualize the timbre and overtones and harmonics. So you can see that the cello and viola are similar in their in the overtones that they have. And then from a single cello to a cello section, you know, there's a lot of powering out in, 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 in all of the harmonics, but it's the same harmonics that are playing. Um, then let's go to the French horn and then the flute. And so this is a good place to uh, end the first video and the next videos in this uh, series or playlist. We'll look at music and we'll look at uh, animal vocalizations and, and decoding the language of, of animals and some machine learning uh, applications of such a visualization. Thank you for watching.